All right, let me show you how this works. You see, markets are interrelated. Uh, sometimes they become uninterrelated, but most of the time they're interrelated. And we're in one of those times right now. And so it's important to understand how the world works. Let's start with interest rates. So interest rates have a big impact on lots of markets. So for example, they can affect the dollar. Right now we're in a situation where interest rates are rising faster than they are in other countries, and that's making the dollar a powerful currency. Now, the dollar has an impact as well. Oh, and of course, if interest rate differentials go down, that hurts the dollar. Now, the dollar going up and down, well, that affects commodities. Usually when the dollar is strong, that makes commodities more expensive, which reduces the demand for commodities, and therefore the price of commodities goes down. Now, by commodities, we mean two big commodity, or includes two big commodities, gold and oil but it also affects copper and zinc and grains and anything else you've got out there. Now, commodity prices have an impact on markets as well. Not so much necessarily in the stock market, but they do in a creepy, underhanded way. You see, commodities are a leading indicator of inflation. So, higher inflation is usually in the early stages of inflation is bullish for the stock market and also bearish for bonds, uh, which means interest rates are rising. And the stock market then affects everything else because the stock market is a leading indicator of the economy. So if the economy is strong, i.e. the stock market is strong, then that means interest rates go up, the dollar goes up, commodities go down. And what happens is it's this constant interaction. There's one other factor, and that is that nothing goes on forever. So, for example, if commodity prices are in a big bull market and they just get higher and higher and higher, that means inflation's going up, then uh, what will happen is interest rates will go up. The higher interest rates will choke off the demand for commodities and therefore the price of commodities goes down. In other words, the markets will go to a point and they will then correct themselves. There's an old investing investment saying that high, the cure for high prices is high prices. So hopefully you now understand why we look at these big four markets because they interact and affect each other and we're in one of those most of the time and we're in one of those times right now. Hey, Courtney Smith here with our weekly video newsletter, Trade Smith, crushing this market. Let's get on. All right, this is going to crush your mind because you got to read it every single week and understand it. Now, a lot of things here. I use the red arrow when something's bearish. I use the green arrow when it's bullish, and I use the yellow arrow when it's neutral. Let's take a look at this. You'll see there's three red arrows on this S&P chart. Now, last week I said that I thought we were getting near a high and I took the highs that we made back in August and I drew a green line across there and I said if, if that this is where the resistance should start to come in. It went a little bit higher. Another thing that I said last week was, this is the top red arrow. I said, when we get the RSI up around 70, that's often a sign of a top. Now, not always, okay? There, you have to look at the context. But the context was that there was a lot of resistance from the old highs. So that's why I thought it was bearish. Sure enough, it was. We've been talking about the purple predictor quite a bit over the last uh, month or so, uh, a month and a half, and you can see that it's much weaker than the price action. That's also bearish. That's our second red arrow. And the third red arrow is, is look at how the volume is increasing on down days and decreasing on up days. So volume is confirming the downside price action. Now, what I told you last week was that we that I expected to have a dip in the market here in the first two weeks of December, and I believe that's exactly what's happening. The prediction from last week is holding up beautifully here, and so we should expect stocks to sell off for a couple of weeks. But don't panic. That's a great buying opportunity. We're building some value back into the marketplace. All right, Dow Jones, same thing, but more bullish. I need to explain this a little bit more. First of all, look at the purple predictor, much stronger than in the S&P. 
What's happening now is that the market is going after value stocks instead of growth stocks. It wants um, old industrial stocks, material stocks, those kinds of things. Uh, Boeing, companies like that, which are just skyrocketing. Uh, steel companies, which um, you know are doing great. They're not looking for sexy biotech or sexy technology. So the Dow is mainly dominated by those old school type of companies. So it's doing really well, whereas the S&P is kind of in between the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. So that's why the Dow is doing so much better. And that's why you need to be focused on those types of old fashioned stocks. Now, here's the, the NASDAQ. It's the worst of all three in the major indices. The purple predictor is cracking down pretty hard. The RSI never even got up to 70. So we need to stay away from these kinds of stocks. Seasonality, bullish. I'm not quite sure where to draw the line that will take me out of my bullish uh, consideration. I've put a yellow line there at the gap that we made at around 128 here on the IWM. If we break below that, I'm going to have to scratch my head and maybe turn my bullish signal off. I need to think a little bit more about it, to be honest. Okay, seasonality, you can see we talked about this, looking for a dip here in the early part of December, and then the market should take off and do really well in the second half. Yield curve is just keeping a cap on rallies. It's not bearish. It's only bearish when it gets down around zero. And um, you can see that a year ago it was up around two. So it's not even close to zero. All right. So this is not bearish at all. But it does kind of keep a cap on on uh, profitability for us. Asset allocation, we're continuing to see that flood of money come out of the bond market and into the stock market. Big time. I mean, really big time. Our stock market risk decator is staggering around, but at a high level, telling us that the market is looking for more risk. It doesn't want uh, conservative stocks. It wants risky stocks. Uh, global shares... Really, I am so bored with this chart, really. I mean, it's not even going down fast enough that I want to get short. It's just drifting lower. So why bother? Stand aside. Greek market, however, this is the one market I told, I told you there's two markets that I like. on, And this is one of them. The Greek market is broken out. Hopefully you're long. Hopefully you're making good money. And of course, even more favorite is Japanese shares. You can see I've been talking about this for months, been in a major bull market. I really hope you got this one. This is DXJ. This is a great buy. Now, I put that green line on there to show you something that's quite interesting. Because what, what we're seeing in the market is a lot of daily momentum divergence. Now, daily momentum divergence just means the market's going to sell off for a few days. This is one of the few markets where as the price is going up and the RSI is at a high level, the market is still going up. In other words, there's no divergence here. It's confirming. And in addition, look at the purple predictor. The purple predictor is saying, come on, let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's keep moving higher. So got to love the Japanese stock market using DXJ. T-notes. <laughs> Man, this has been a huge winner for us. Originally got short up around the 136 area. We're now down around, let's call it 120. If you're trading futures, that would be a $16,000 winner. <laughs> Pretty good. That pays for a few years of Tradesmith. Even if you're trading TLT and you have 100 shares, you've made a lot of money on this trade. Now let's break it down. The top red uh, bar is just showing us that it's a downtrend. But notice what's happening with my two green lines. The two green lines show that the price is going lower, but the RSI is going higher. Now that, once again, is a divergence and suggests that the price of bonds are about to rebound. We're going to see a rebound uh, maybe up to the gap at 128. That would be a good target to have. Maybe up to the downtrend line at 125. So right now, let's say I'm looking for bonds to actually move higher. That means interest rates go lower. Now, my counter argument is that red arrow down at the bottom. And the red arrow shows that volume increased significantly 
on the down days, not on the up days. So I may be premature on my uh, rally call, but look for a rally coming up pretty soon on the bonds, looking for lower interest rates. Bond key factors, still the most critical one is the blue line, and it's looking for higher yields. So I'm not abandoning the short side of the bond market, not at all, but I am looking for a, a normal correction in that bear market. Now, dollar, whoa, okay. You know, I've been mega bull on this for quite some time, but my two red arrows say that we're having a little correction here. Once again, normal markets don't go up every single day, although it seemed like it. I think they went up something like nine or 10 days in a row. But nonetheless, look, that momentum divergence is telling us that the market has peaked out maybe for just this week. Look for a little correction. Where's the correction going to go? I think down to the purple line would be a good target for it. That's basically the highs that we made back in October. Uh, that would be about a 50% correction of the last up leg. So around, I'm sorry, 99.50, somewhere in that area, I would look for a correction here in the dollar. That coincides perfectly with my call in the TLT, where I'm saying interest rates are going to go lower so that they tie together. Get it? After our presentation at the top of the uh, show? All right, awesome. And gold, once again, we've got this little divergence. It's all fitting together, isn't it? So here I'm looking for gold to rally up once again, maybe as high as the purple line at 1240. But, uh, well, we'll see. Uh, it just it might only get up to 1210, but uh, 1240 would be the best I would look for. Still a bear market, though. These are just counter trend moves, not trend changes. And our indicators, though, are turning much more bullish on gold. Now they're a mixed bag, whereas we had been pretty consistently bearish on our indicators. This also suggests we're going to see some stability in gold. So once again, starting to see reasons to believe that we're going to see a little rally in the gold market. Oil now. OK, I've been bearish and I've been telling you that uh, I want to use a rally to short, which I haven't done yet. Haven't got short yet. OPEC came out and said that they're going to, uh, the Saudis came out and stunned the world and said, we're going to agree to production cuts. Now, I have to tell you, I've been doing this for 45 years. I've heard them say that before and not follow through. Or how about this? Even if they follow through, nobody else will. So everybody else will take advantage of the Saudis cutting by over a million barrels a day to increase their sales under the table in hidden cargoes of the same amount. So I still do not believe that this is a significant bull market. I'm not getting long uh, these stocks because I just don't think it's sustainable. We're up near the high end of the range. Um, I'd like to see one or two days more action, but generally speaking, I would expect this market to get up to maybe 53, 54 and then fail, fail but I haven't put my money on it yet. So forget my opinion. Just follow what I, t what I tell you I'm doing. That's the big key, right? All right, everybody. Hey, freebies, love having you here. You know that. We love having you. Having all those people on our podcast, we love all the five-star reviews we're getting. It's really, really gratifying because we're trying to provide value here. But of course, you get even more value if you subscribe. We're getting a lot of new subscribers and you really should be one of them. All right, everybody, thank you, freebies. Uh, fully paid up members, hang in there. Got a couple of new trades here for you, uh, and we'll get there in just a second.